Big NFL trade Wednesday. Baker Mayfield on his way to the to I was going to say the Cleveland Browns to, from the Cleveland Browns mm. to the Carolina Panthers. Does this affect Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers' ability to trade him, or where Jimmy G might end up if the 49ers were to release him once he is cleared to throw? We'll get into those subjects and maybe some Twitter questions in the Locked On 49ers mailbag as well on this Weeky Wednesday episode coming up right now. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Nicholas Winkler here with you on a Winky Wednesday. It's why it's called Nick Winkler or why it's called Winky Wednesday, because Nick Winkler is our guest every Wednesday here on the podcast, but there's no Croc today. Croc is traveling from California. He was with the fam all weekend, had a nice holiday, went to Disneyland and all that. He's back on his way flying to Arkansas. So it's just a little old school Gold Faithful podcast style episode today with Peacock and Winkler doing it up. I do still have to play, though, the intro music. Not that intro music. I'm screwed. It's like, ooh, that's a new one. All right. (laughs) Nicholas Winkler, come on down. There we go. There it is. What's happening, Wink? Wow. Gets me all pumped up, you know, when you play yeah. that. The adrenaline yeah. starts flowing. It reminds me. Takes me back. Absolutely. I, I I have the old intro for our old podcast somewhere in here. I think I could probably pull it up. But um, the, the big trade Wednesday, Baker Mayfield on his way to Carolina from the Cleveland Browns. Let's go over the details really quick here. It was Baker Mayfield going to the Panthers. Mm. The Panthers sending Cleveland a 2024 conditional fifth round pick, not a 2023 pick, a 2024 Mm -hmm. conditional fifth round pick, which looks like it could become a fourth round pick. So a fifth that could become a fourth is what I'm seeing in 2024. For, depending on games played for Baker Mayfield. And clearly the Panthers made this move for Baker Mayfield to be their starter. We'll get into all of that for what it means for both of these teams and what it c- could potentially mean for the San Francisco 49ers, which is why we're bringing it up and probably going to be talking a lot about it uh, today here on a 49ers themed podcast. And the key to this one to me is the money that's going both ways. And uh, originally it was that that the uh, Browns would be paying half of this deal. And it's actually more than that. So the Browns Mm -hmm. are actually of the guaranteed money that Baker Mayfield was going to get on his fifth year option this year. He was going to get 18, almost $19 million. So over half of it will be paid by the Browns. They're going to pay 10 and a half million of it. So that just becomes dead money instantly for the Cleveland Browns. They're paying 10 and a half million dollars for Baker Mayfield, not to be on their roster (laughs) to Uh, go away. But the rest of that, Money is gone. And so I think it's a big win for the Browns to be able to get a fifth round pick and that could potentially be a fourth round pick. And I think Baker Mayfield will probably earn that fourth round pick, whatever the, you know, whatever the the conditions are. I think he's a good enough quarterback to win that starting job unless he's hurt or something. He'll be the guy and he'll probably earn that uh, whatever, whatever the stipulations exactly are, which I have not seen yet. Um, But one of the keys is Baker Mayfield to help facilitate all of this trimmed three and a half million dollars off of this off of his salary so the panthers didn't have to take on all of it because by the way the panthers already have a guy that was drafted two picks later after the number one overall pick in baker mayfield and sam darnold so they got two of the top three picks from the 2018 draft right now on their roster in darnold and mayfield uh so that leaves only five million dollars about left for the panthers to pay a baker mayfield salary while they're already paying 18 million dollars of the guaranteed fifth year option for Sam Darnold. So it's a roundabout way for the Panthers to now have competition or probably pretty clearly to me, a new starting quarterback and a very expensive backup quarterback in the Cleveland Browns now who aren't going to have the guy they traded for, which is why the Baker Mayfield stuff went South in the first place, probably because of a suspension are now looking at Jacoby Brissett, maybe as the starting quarterback, but that's where, the 49ers could step in and change some things before we get into all this stuff. But like, (laughs) what do you, what do you think about this deal? What do you think about this deal for the Browns? What do you think about this deal for the Panthers and and where you at with Baker Mayfield? Cause I, I think he was, you know, 
clearly disappointing for what an overall number one pick mm-hmm. you would hope he becomes. But man, right. if you just rewinded one year, Baker Mayfield coming off a, a playoff playoffs for the for the Browns, right? Right. Uh, you're talking about is this guy going to get thirty plus million dollars a year? This huge extension is what was supposed to happen this off season, but he had that injury plagued year and maybe some personality conflicts. I don't know, but um, it, it's pretty crazy to see where Baker Mayfield is at right now for really nothing you're you're picking up five million dollars and a fifth round pick for a guy that can be a starting quarterback in the nfl i mean market value is what carson wentz cost washington early in the offseason right they moved quickly and market value is a second or third round pick and 20 whatever million 27 million dollars right <laughs> Mayfield, i think is more valuable than carson wentz and so that's a smoking deal to me for the for the carolina panthers just there but we have to go follow the rest of the draft picks in the money and figure out what it really looks like for the panthers but just this one move this is uh, mm. a buy low for for the panthers for sure yeah 100 percent. i mean baker mayfield's a good quarterback right i mean he's not a great quarterback he had one really good season and he's had three other just pretty average seasons you know right or close a little under four thousand yards he throws 20 something touchdowns probably throws in high teens interceptions like that's kind of an average baker mayfield season right but like you said he was the number one overall pick so you definitely expected more as a cleveland browns fan the organization i'm sure thought we got our guy like he's gonna take us to that next level and you've kind of seen like little bits of it here and there he's had some really good games and then he's had some really horrible games and you talk about you compared him to carson wentz and carson wentz has had a whole full season where it's like wow okay this guy is the real deal but he can't stay healthy so to me it makes it tricky because Baker Mayfield has stayed healthy. You, he made, he had an injury plagued season, but he played. You know, and he was out there and he was available and he put himself on the line and his career on the line. Getting out there with a shoulder injury, I mean, that's not something quarterbacks usually do. I know it's his non throwing arm, but still, like you, you risk a lot when you put yourself out there like that. So, like the toughness is there for Baker Mayfield. He he gets it as a quarterback. I don't know if he's that guy though. Right. I don't think he's that guy that's going to get twenty five, twenty eight million dollars. He's not that guy that that you can build a franchise around. And I'm not sure that the Browns think he or that the Panthers think he is. You know, maybe he's just kind of that stopgap right now because Sam Darnold's clearly not it. And and we keep talking about Baker Mayfield just going to get in that job. Maybe he doesn't. You know, maybe there's an open quarterback competition when they when they go into camp and, and maybe he doesn't get that job. So. I like the move for the Panthers. You you talked about the money. If the Browns are going to eat $10 million, and I, I think that final three and a half he restructured as like incentives or something so that he could still get that three and a half million dollars from the Panthers, but he just kind of has to earn it. Yeah. Um, and that's something he could do, right? I mean, there's a lot of talent still there on the Panthers, especially when it comes to like the skill position players. So I think it's a good move for the Panthers. I, I, and for the Browns, I, I still hate the Deshaun Watson move. So for me, it's like, I, I don't know what the heck they're doing. They're going to start with Brissett. Like, I, I don't know. It, it's a little bit confusing what's going on there in Cleveland, yeah. but I don't try to make sense of what the Browns do. You, you get the feeling it's sort of shuffling deck chairs, especially when the money stuff starts getting involved. It's shuffling deck right. chairs on the Titanic for these two teams with, with the way it seems <laughs> like it's going. But the Panthers got better, and I yeah. think clearly Mayfield will will win that job over Sam Darnold, although they both have a – you know, a penchant for throwing interceptions. So who knows if that saves Matt Rule's job or not. But what's interesting is um, Baker Mayfield, they spent the least amount to get on their entire roster of quarterbacks because Mm -hmm. they just traded up in the draft to get that third round pick with a future fourth to get Matt Corral, who they drafted in the third round. And then the uh, what became a second round pick and plus a fourth, I think the year before for Sam Darnold. Like six picks or something, right? For those three guys? Oh my gosh. Okay. Before we, before we talk about Jimmy G's potential movement in, in all of this, um, here's what the Panthers did to end up where they're at. Okay. They so they traded 137 this year mm-hmm. and a future third to go up and get Matt Corral in the draft. They okay. traded a conditional fifth round pick for Baker Mayfield. And that is already after they traded a sixth plus future second and fourth. So that's what the deal was for Sam Darnold. So they have a, a they've traded a second, a third, a fourth, mm. a, another fourth, a fifth and a sixth to end up with an expensive quarterback room 
of Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Matt Corral that they're paying, you know, more than the 49ers are paying Jimmy Garoppolo by himself for that for that whole group when you have 18 million and another uh, but at least they didn't have to take on all of the the baker mayfield money but they did have to still you know they didn't never never found a suitor and they're saying we're not we're not trying to trade sam Darnold. It's like well, nobody's going to take sam right. Darnold's contract is why you're not trading sam Darnold. <laughs> you'd have to send a pick with Darnold just for a team to take that money right so and eat some of that money for sure that's a pretty amazing that's a pretty amazing amount of time and effort and picks and money to have still a pretty mediocre mm. probably quarterback room but yeah knows? you said it it's pretty mediocre you know baker mayfield again he's shown signs darnold's never really shown any signs and, and we have no idea what the other guy's all about so yeah that that's a lot to give up but it really reminds you how important that quarterback position is in the nfl right i mean they'll give up a bunch of picks for just like whatever guys and and how important it is to have a plan. Because that's what... It, like, yeah. Did the Panthers right. have a plan? No. Like, what was the Matt Corral thing if you were going to end up doing the <laughs> Baker Mayfield thing anyway, right? So right. Uh, it, it's just a really strange way to go about it. But uh, they they got the best quarterback they can get right now. The Panthers did. Now, let's talk about the Cleveland Browns next. Let's talk about the San Francisco 49ers, how Jimmy G might fit in there next. And first, we have to tell the folks, though, about... Built Bar and all the fantastic flavors at Built.com. You know, I love the peanut butter, traditional Built Bar. They've got the puffs. They've got the new coconut brownie chunk Built Bar. They have a puff version of the coconut brownie chunk as well. So if you want yourself a deliciously chewy, marshmallowy, covered in 100% chocolate, fluffy cloud of coconut brownie goodness, well, guess what? You can find it at built.com and you can get 15% off. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute, but the key here when it comes to built bars is it's all about the macros, right? When you, when you're trying to eat healthy, you want high protein, you want low sugar, you want low calories, right? Low in net carbs. That's exactly what built bars are. Most built bars are 130 to 150 calories, 17 grams of protein, only four or five grams of sugar. It's pretty amazing. They're able to pack all that flavor and great taste. So you really feel like you're getting something and getting a treat when you're reaching for a built bar and you don't feel like you're eating healthy, even though you are. And best of all, you can go to built.com right now and use promo code locked 15 to get 15% off your order. That is promo code locked 15 for 15% off at built.com. The Cleveland Browns now have mm -hmm. a quarterback roster of Jacoby Brissett and uh, Joshua Dobbs is are their quarterbacks. If, and I say if, I think it's pretty inevitable that Deshaun Watson is going to be suspended for, right. at the very minimum, you know, six, eight games, but most likely you know, the league, the owners, the league, the other 31 owners are pushing for an indefinite suspension for Deshaun Watson. He's probably not going to play this year. He's going to get suspended for a year and maybe more. Who knows? We'll see where this whole thing goes. But the Browns should be planning to not have Deshaun Watson. And maybe they need something definitive to happen there before they do something definitive at quarterback to find a starter or find someone to compete with Jacoby Brissett as a starter. You watch a lot of football, Wink. You play a lot of fantasy mm -hmm. football. You've seen a lot of Jimmy Garoppolo, and I know you've seen a lot of Jacoby Reset. Do you think Jimmy Garoppolo is enough of an upgrade for the Cleveland Browns to do something and bring him in to start over Jacoby Reset? 100%. Jimmy Garoppolo is a winner. You know, you look at his overall QB rating. Just look at that. You know, like look at a guy who wins, who goes out. He doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. He does throw touchdowns. He's a very accurate passer. He's a leader. And he's a winner. That's a huge upgrade if you're the Cleveland Browns. Now, they're paying $10 million of Baker Mayfield's you know, salary to push him away. Like, how much of the Jimmy Garoppolo salary would the 49ers have to eat? I know they got a lot of cap space when they did that, too. They cleared up, they cleared up some room in order to, to get him out of there. So, I think they could eat the whole contract and, and be okay with it. But will they, right? I mean, do they see themselves as like, yeah, we're ready to go. They've got a couple of great running backs. They've got a great defense. Maybe they do. Maybe they see themselves as like, yeah, we can go win the central right now. Like let's, let's do the North. Uh, let, let's do what we need to do to win. And that's, that's a, a guy that can do it. Jimmy Garoppolo is a proven leader. He he's led, you know, the 49ers to two NFC championship games and 
a Super Bowl, and that's in like his only two full seasons. So that that's pretty incredible when you when you look at it of what Jimmy Garoppolo's done. So yeah, I think if you're the Cleveland Browns, you at least got to kick the tires on it, right? I know Jimmy's supposed to start a throwing program here soon. I mean, but the clock's ticking, right? I mean, we're three weeks away from training camp starting. Like something's got to get done here pretty soon if if that's going to be the way that the Browns are going. Yeah, we've got less than three weeks and be reporting for training camp here. So yeah. um, as long as Jimmy Garoppolo is clear before then and can start camp and he's ready to go and it seems like that's the path we're on, we'll see whether it's a trade or whether – and th- look, this could be a trade. This could be where Jimmy Garoppolo gets released and is just free to sign somewhere. Does he go sign in Seattle? Does he go sign in Cleveland? He's going to sign somewhere. It just depends mm-hmm. on where and, and how much money if he was released. And if any teams like him enough once he's cleared – and it seems like there's a path now with the, with the Cleveland Browns if they are willing to give up, you know, something that makes sense for the 49ers. And then obviously there have to be restructuring and contract stuff to make it all work because nobody's going to just take on the entire $25 million that they would owe Jimmy Garoppolo with all, also, you know, what what else the uh, a team like the Cleveland Browns are paying. One thing I will say, though, yes, leadership and all of that, uh, still too many interceptions, though, for Jimmy Garoppolo. And I know some listeners are like, yeah, come on. He throws too many picks. We don't like that about Jimmy G. But so, Baker Mayfield did too. Baker but, Mayfield, a little I was gonna bit say, of- if you're a Browns fan, it's an upgrade. <laughs> it's better than what you had before. He throws fewer interceptions for and, sure. And and Darnold, I think, threw more interceptions of both of them throughout the most. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. Um and I think if he's a Garoppolo is a really good fit for Stefanski's offense. You know, it's the Kubiak mm. system, right? Which is the Shanahan system. Essentially, yeah. you know, the verbiage, he'd be able to come in right away and play well. I don't actually even love the Baker Mayfield fit for uh, McAdoo's offense in Carolina. Cause that's sort of a West coast base, get the ball out quick. And, and Baker Mayfield, I thought his best fit was Seattle. Cause he plays a lot more like Russell Wilson than he does like a, a Garoppolo or a, you know, a cousins type or someone who gets the ball out, you know, breeze that gets the ball out in two, five, 2.5 seconds or less. But um, as far as Jimmy to the Browns, I think the fit makes sense. A team that can play defense, run the ball. They want to run two tight ends, right? Jimmy Garoppolo has worked in that offense before efficiently. So I think all of that makes sense and fits. And from a cap perspective, even though they've got $10.5 million of dead money in Baker Mayfield now, the Cleveland Browns have almost $50 million of cap space this year. They could fit the entirety. They could fit Jimmy's whole contract in if they wanted to, because the way they structured Deshaun Watson's deal is, is all backloaded. So Deshaun Watson's base salary this year is only $1 million. Wow. And I think that's one of the big big hangups with the league is if Deshaun Watson gets a one one year suspension, he's going to still see $230 million of his contract, right? He's going to see most of his big contract. So, I think the league wants more punishment there monetarily too for, uh, I think they want him to lose some of that big money that he's going to start seeing next year when all that kicks in. But for a one year proposition, the Cleveland Browns can absolutely bring in Jimmy Garoppolo's salary, especially if, and Jimmy would have Jimmy, you know, and if, if a trade was consummated, Jimmy knows he would have to take a huge pay cut. Um, and there would have to be some restructuring, maybe some incentives too. To, mm-hmm. to help get him some of that money back, but he would, it would it'd be more probably than if he just was released and signed as a free agent. Right. So for Jimmy, he'd probably still rather negotiate that and negotiate a trade because I think he could negotiate from a place of power with a $25 million contract versus, you know, being a free, free agent. And it's like, well, there's two teams and one of them's offering you a contract of 6 million. So you got to take, you know, so that, that might be where it ends up for Jimmy Garoppolo. And we'll see if it's a trade or a release, but I think the fit makes total sense. Jimmy Garoppolo has already been ahead of Jacoby Brissett on a roster in his NFL career. Right. Um, and mm-hmm. consider the, when you consider the Baker Mayfield money and the Watson contract, and he does have some signing bonus prorated. And then the Jacoby Brissett's uh, got $1.5 million base salary, but he's got some signing bonus as well. So I think it's about four and a half million cap number. It would be a pretty significant cap number if uh, if the Browns took on a lot of what Jimmy Garoppolo currently makes, but it, it's your best shot at making the playoffs with, if Deshaun Watson's going to be suspended all year rather than just kind of going, well, okay, there's a guy that is a backup that knows he knows he's a backup. We knew he was a backup. He's being paid like a backup in Jacoby Brissett. Are you just going to roll mm. with that with Joshua Dodd? For a whole in? season? For a yeah. whole season, like, are season. you punting okay. on the season? What yeah. are you showing your team? What are you showing your fan base if you do yeah. that, right? 
Right. Yeah. yeah this, so, is our, this is our window. This is our year to win. And then what happens next year uh, is your is once once Watson does get expensive and is he even back then? And then right. what are you looking at with, uh, you know, everyone on your roster is a year older. You've got some free agents are going to bring it, be able to bring those guys back. Does your does your window start to close really quickly? So I don't know. It's interesting. I think if he's released for sure. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to end up on a roster, probably Seattle or Cleveland, but I think there's still potential for a trade maybe. And I don't know if the Niners would get a lot and they'd have to make the money obviously work, but maybe the Niners will end up getting a mid round pick out of this. Eventually, maybe it's the same pick. They just flip it to the Niners that they just got from Carolina. Right. That conditional fifth goes over there. It makes a lot of sense because let's not forget. We talk about all the upside of Jimmy G and the occasional interception that he likes to throw. But this is also a guy that's coming off of a shoulder surgery, right, of his throwing shoulder. So it's going to be interesting to see how he looks, how if he actually starts a throwing program, how he looks, what teams are you know calling to check in on him, which ones show up to, you know, get some video on him, get some tape and, and actually want to make a deal because maybe they're just waiting. Right, waiting for the 49ers to cut him because the, the I think the 49ers are we all do they're playing chicken and they're like yeah oh, we're not gonna cut this guy we're cool keeping this huge salary we're fine he'll be an expensive backup but let's be real they're they're probably gonna cut him if they don't get anything for him so maybe a team like Cleveland who just made this move and the Deshaun Watson stuff starting to come maybe they do think like okay we we got to do something we we got it we got to go get this guy before he hits the market and and we'll work out all the details later. So that's kind of, I think, the 49ers best case scenario at this point. All right. I've got some listener suggestions of a potential trade Ooh. for the 49ers and the Cleveland Browns. And I've got a question for you, Wink, about if Jimmy Garoppolo actually would be released by the 49ers or if he would hmm. just roll on into camp with his new freshly surgered arm. Is that a word? I don't know. Surgered. I like it. <laughs> First, I got to <laughs> talk about bet online and you can bet on just about anything NFL related for the 2022 season. Tons of futures, props, coach of the year, which coaches get fired. Baker Mayfield now, you could probably bet, get some pretty good odds on him being MVP of the league. How, how, how much of a story would that be if uh, Baker Mayfield made good for those Carolina Panthers uh, in a revenge tour? By the way, week one odds, Browns at Panthers. That'll be a fun one. You can bet on that right now. At Bet Online, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Major League Baseball all summer long, boxing, MMA, golf, live betting, esports, and more. Not just your continued source for sports wagering, but Bet Online is the place to go for news and information as well. So get on over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Wink, mm -hmm. there's been a game of chicken that we've kind of talked about all offseason long with Jimmy Garoppolo. And on one hand, Kyle Shanahan's like, well, yeah, that's why we tried to trade him because we love Trey Lance. It's Trey Lance's job. Like, that's kind of what we know is happening. But then right. there's also, they keep saying stuff like, oh, well, but, you know, you don't give him away for nothing. He's, uh, you know, he's a really good quarterback. You don't give those away. And we can take him to training camp when it, July 26th. Players are reporting to training camp, right? Is Jimmy mm -hmm. Garoppolo on the 49ers roster? If they don't trade him, I think he is. I, I think that they will hold on and play chicken as long as it takes. I don't think that John Lynch will back down. He said what York's York's cool with it. Like we're gonna we're gonna pay this guy. They say it's it's okay for us to have a $25 million backup quarterback, essentially. So I, I don't think that they cut him. I really don't. I can't see the 49ers giving up, like you said a starting quarterback, a good quarterback, a guy who's better than Baker Mayfield, a guy that's better than a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL right now, a proven winner. They're not just going to cut him and release him to, to save some money. It's just money, right? They're not going to go put that in, in another free agent right now. Free agency's done. Like all the big name guys are locked up. All those contracts are already signed. Like this seems like they're going to either get something for him or he might be there not just day one of training camp, but he might be there day one of the regular season too. I think that they're going to make some calls as soon as Jimmy Garoppolo is cleared, see if they can mm -hmm. work out a trade, see if there's interest there. If there's not, then they'll release Jimmy Garoppolo uh, once he's cleared. You do. Come. You think and they they have that guarantee. Uh, I don't Ow. think they're going to take him to camp, but training camp is sort of the, the soft deadline. The real hard deadline is when the season starts making that week one roster final that, roster, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's when Jimmy G's 
contract becomes fully guaranteed and then you can't get mm -hmm. rid of that 25 million dollars and they need to roll that 25 million dollars over in the next year and they might need a little bit more in you know in in signing bonus uh wiggle room if they want to do a deal with debo i think they could i, I don't think they those two things really impact each other too much but it probably helps mm -hmm. to have 25 million in cap space when you're doing a deal versus not a lot of cap space right so um and i think debo's money is going to start kicking in next year and, and, and usually what happens in a lot of these contracts when you sign a big long-term deal you're you, the first year actually goes down, you know, like that's mm. the, next summer when Nick Bosa is going to sign, he's going to be on his fifth year option. And that fifth year option contract will go, it'll get lower. Like he'll get paid. Right. His cap number will be lower after he signs his contract. Right. And but he'll it, get more guaranteed money in the long right. run. And it might be right. the same with Debo or maybe his D, maybe Debo's contract that he signs doesn't even kick in until the following year. And this year he's just his normal contract, like we saw with the Terry McLaurin deal. He got a three-year extension. The st extension dollars don't even start until the, the following year. So uh, we'll see how it goes with Debo Samuel's contract and stuff. But I don't think that's necessarily related to Jimmy Garoppolo. But you do have to get Jimmy Garoppolo's $25 million rolled over into next year. And if Jimmy Garoppolo was to stay on the roster, to me it would be because he crept into camp Trey Lance got hurt or something, you know, or Trey Lance is a disaster. And right. even then still, I think they would ask for Jimmy to take a pay cut. So clearly Jimmy Garoppolo is not going to get the money he's making now from any team, including the 49ers. But the question is, is it a trade? Is he released? Which team actually pays him and how much that ends up being? And I do think it'll happen before training camp, but training camp isn't quite the hard deadline. And there is that, I, that feeling in the back of my mind is like, yeah, the 49ers might actually take him to training camp. <laughs> And it'll make for good storylines. Right. I just don't know if that's the move. I don't know if that's the play at all. I mean, that's the biggest question, though, right? Going into training camp is, will Jimmy Garoppolo be a 49er yeah, when it starts? Just, yeah, it's a great point because we were talking about this off the air. Our podcast yesterday, we were focusing more on the on the you know the current rosters, and I didn't even really – my big question with quarterbacks is how good is Trey Lance going to be? But your biggest question going into training camp is, is that cloud of Jimmy G going to hang over <laughs> Trey Lance, right? Yeah, I mean, if he shows up, you know, day one to training camp and all offseason Lance has been like, this is my team. They're telling me it's my team. I'm ready to go. And then the locker next to him, Jimmy Garoppolo is there getting, you know, ready to practice. Like, it, that's, that's a big deal. That's yeah. a big problem. And everyone loves Jimmy in the locker room. He's already sure. got the locker room. So that's a weird dynamic. But it's but just for, awkward for Trey Lance. It would be like, you know, that uh, that scene in the office when uh, when Toby walks in. <laughs> after he didn't work there and he walked in and Michael Scott sees him and he, you've seen the no! game, he just says no he just keeps seeing no over and over again. that's probably the reaction from Trey Lance right once Jimmy G walks in and reports to training camp but uh the rest of the team would probably you know like having Jimmy G around in some ways but I, I don't know if it's necessarily healthy to have that thing happen right. and, and I don't and to be honest Jimmy might just say nope yeah I'm going to stay no, home. They were, they're no, not going to find him I'm if not, he doesn't show up. Yeah, I, I, That's why I think in the end, it'll be like, all right, let's just, you know, well, you're cleared to throw. There's no uh, injury guarantees anymore in your contract. Go find a new home. Be on your way. And, and he's released yeah. into the wild. Chicken gets I, dangerous, right? right the longer, yeah. longer you wait for it. And so, yep. yeah, I, I, I would be shocked if he practices with the 49ers. I, I think he might show up, just be like, yeah, look, I'm still on the roster. I, I'm just not quite ready to throw you. And then he eventually gets traded. Yeah. That's, and that's like, case and scenario, what, right? And what if he gets hurt in training camp? It I would know. be again, it, it wouldn't be, uh, you, it wouldn't all become guaranteed, but it, the injury guarantee would be enough of it. So another seven yeah. and a half million that you would have to, if you did release him, and then, you, then you're on the hook for seven and a half, unless he signs somewhere else for seven and a half. And so um, you probably don't want to go through all that if you're, if you're the 49ers. Right. Last one here for you, Wink. And this was thrown out there actually last week, I think, by one of the listeners, and I saved it. And now it's really pertinent here. Mm -hmm. It's from Wisco Niner on Twitter. He says, Jimmy for Kareem Hunt. Who says no? What do you think? The Browns. Browns bring back Kareem no. Hunt for Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, the None? Niners say yes, but I think the Browns say no. Right? I mean, that that's he's part of their two-headed monster. Like, he's what makes that backfield really go is you have that change-up. You have that... It, he's not as good, but he's a step back, right? Let me so. add one wrinkle. What, let me add okay. one wrinkle because this is also part of the salary stuff. So the Niners, this is one of the ways the Niners could take back salary from the mm -hmm. Browns is they take a player who's getting paid something. And I'm actually, I still have that page up. Let's find out what Kareem Hunt is right hunted at. like the tail end of a big deal that's kind of backloaded. Yeah, he kind of had that weird three year contract. Okay. Well, and maybe I don't think it was big money or anything. 
Mm-hmm. I think the Niners would jump at something like that, right? Kareem Hunt is okay. So Kareem Hunt's cap number this year is six point two million dollars. He's got uh, one point three base and then some um, roster bonuses. Yeah, so, I don't think the Browns would do that. I I, I hope that they would I, it to to relieve some pressure of the salary cap. You already have a star running back who starts ahead of Kareem Hunt in Nick, but Chubb. doesn't stay healthy. He misses time every year. Yeah, as running backs do. So how about this wrinkle? So Kareem Hunt goes to the Niners. Mm-hmm. It's a way that the Browns can get rid of some cap. Jimmy also has to take a pay cut, restructure, do some other things to make the money work. Then that way the Browns don't have to give up a draft pick. The 49ers save face. They got something back. Maybe the best running back on their roster would be Kareem Hunt all of a sudden. And the Niners also send back to the Browns for depth at running back. Trey Sermon, last year's third round. Hmm. running back or jeff wilson and then tommy fam just slaps everybody <laughs> <Jeff Wilson. laughs> i didn't even understand what was the ir thing with with josh because yeah, like he wasn't tommy yeah because he wasn't technically on the ir he was out but if you have a guy who's out th- the rules let you put him on the ir and i guess fam got all mad that he had done that and okay, yeah, picked okay. up another was one another of those guy for his roster I thought it was one of those things where he came back from IR, but he was still in the IR designation. And, and then but they, get... they won't let you make a move, though, if that's like maybe case. maybe your roster is already set. Because I've done this before mm, with the I DL, see. especially in baseball. You got a guy on the right. DL. Your lineups were already set for the week. So you just let him sit there because yeah. you can't change anything. But if your lineups are cool, you just let your lineup yeah. sit there for an extra few days and you don't lose a roster spot. And then it, inevitably somebody else gets hurt. Then you just swap and put that guy in the DL and bring your right. guy out. But they, what it comes down to is Jock Peterson followed the rules and it doesn't sound like fam knew the rules and just got really mad about it. And was just mad because someone was talking crap to him. Probably. Exactly. Yeah. Cause that's where the, that's where the anger resides. That was wild, man. Yeah. It's a great story. I love how uh, fantasy football just creeps into major league baseball locker rooms and it creeps into fight. everything you guys get in a fight but uh wink don't slap me when i show up for the draft this year because of things that happen in our fancy football hey okay. don't draft jeff wilson then <laughs> i will i didn't draft jeff wilson i, I drafted horribly. You drafted everyone else i in fact people should hug me for how poorly i drafted last year in that league we did and we appreciated it yeah. and margaritas are on the house again buddy but you know who was on my roster when i won a title in that league kareem hunt that's so right. Kareem Hunt home. Where he I get him as a rookie, right? I had rookie Kareem ago. Hunt and rookie Alvin, Alvin Kamara. Kamara. Yep, yeah, I remember. That was a big one. That was a big Impressive. one. Impressive. Kamara was on my keeper for, I think he was my keeper until last year. I had yeah, for while. like three seasons, four seasons. Yeah. It's good stuff. All right. Fantastic. Wink, thanks for joining me here on another successful Winky Wednesday, as always. My pleasure, buddy. Oh, you know what we didn't do? Hold on. Oh, I got to get going, though. I got to pick up my kids. Okay. Can you say something terrible about Crocs all-time San Francisco 49ers roster? Yes, look at round 22 when he took Bill (laughs) Romanowski off the rails after that. He lost it. He he lost it all. He had the curse of Romanowski. Don Griffin on the board. He goes, Carlos Rogers. Charlie yeah, Garner, I mean, there were so many other guys out. He left. Nobody drafted Ken Willard, the fourth all-time leading rusher of the 49ers. I mean, that's where he should have gone, right there. Boom. All right, so that's just checking to see if Croc's listening to the podcast when he's not on it. <laughs> um, at Bay Area Wink is where you can find Nick. He jumps on with us every Wednesday on a Winky Wednesday pod here. You can find me on Twitter at BD Peacock. Thanks for making Locked On 49ers your first listen every day for your second listen make sure you're checking out the rest the network has to offer including the peacock and williamson nfl show and croc doing the locked on nfl draft podcast and croc and i will be back right here tomorrow locked on 49ers see you all right buddy